Basically, if we take out 44,000, we start moving above, we can retest our highs. If not, and we start getting pushed down, Hello everyone, as Metastock is surging and jobs data is exceptionally positive, our guest Gareth Soloway analyzes the market reactions and the near future trend predictions. Soloway also talks Bitcoin and crypto and concludes with his key levels and price patterns to come. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Let's take a look at these headlines here, guys. So this is the kicker. So first off, non-farm payroll shocks, 350,000 jobs added versus basically 187 expected. Biggest job gains since January of 2023. So think about that, guys. So this is the biggest job gain in one full year. So is this economy starting to rev up again or is this a false flag? And we're gonna find that out obviously in the coming days, weeks, and months. The one thing I'll say is you can't deny the layoffs that are being announced. Every single company coming out almost with earnings is announcing layoffs. So again, is this an anomaly? We're gonna find out. Let's take a look here. Unemployment report came in at 3.7%, okay versus forecast of 3.8, so that was a little better as well. The only kicker I would say here, and this is possibly an indicator that things aren't quite as good as expected, is if we look at the U6, all right? Now the U6 means these are people, when you're counted as in the U6, it's people that are unemployed, or basically underemployed, meaning if you wanna get a job, you wanna get a full-time job, but you're unable to find a full-time job, so you take a part-time job, that would include you in U6, which tells you again that you are underemployed. You're not, you're not getting used as much as you want to in the workforce. Now again, that came in at 7.2%, last month was 7.1%, so that's numbers actually creeping up just a little bit, so we wanna keep an eye on that. All right, next up, let's scroll down, let's see what we have here guys the other headlines of the day and basically we know these already these came out yesterday after hours we have meta blows by estimates on earnings and revenue the trillion dollar stock is surging 17 percent pre-market one note though and this is something that caught my attention guys a massive amount of revenue came from china for advertising so again a lot of upside we're seeing meta again basically adding 175 billion dollars in market cap this morning but again let's just see exactly what's going on here is this coming from outside the u.s it does appear to be coming from china at least not listen not everything right but a chunk a decent sized chunk more than you would anticipate coming from china something the government may have to look into all right. Um, they also announced a $50 billion stock buy buyback. That's more artificial engineering. For you guys out there, you may not know what artificial engineering is. It's basically where companies buy back their stock. And just to simplify this is that if you have 10 shares in the company, right? 10 shares in the company, okay? And you're making $10 per share or $10 in profits, that's $1 per share. Okay, so again, $10 in profits divided by 10 shares, it's $1 in profit, right? So that's what you have there. Now, if you as a company buy back half those shares and now there are only five shares, right? Five shares, but you're still making the same amount of money, how much is each share worth or each share is making how much in profit? And the answer is $2. So again, you artificially, you don't, you don't make any more money. The company's not making more money, but because you buy back the other half or half of your stock, you now artificially have a $2 per share profit versus a $1 per share profit. So these little tidbits, they're important because this is something that Apple has done for years, guys. They have done, they had such a big cash pile, they just kept on buying back billions and billions, hundreds of billions in stock, and it artificially inflated a lot of their, their numbers. Now we're starting to see, again, the truth as, as Apple, again, on earnings is down. Now, Meta's quarter was still great. There's nothing to take away from it, but except, again, the fact that, again, a lot of that revenue is coming from China. 
Apple continues to lag on earnings, failed to impress. The stock down is uh, down about 3%. The key technical level remains 180. If you close below 180 and confirm, let's say on Monday, now you're talking about a bigger breakdown on Apple. And again, we're slowly seeing the emergence of the Googles of the world, the Nvidia's of the world as being the top players. It used to be Apple, not so much now. Again, even Tesla, Tesla's obviously fallen way out of the mix, but Apple was still the big player now. And again, not so much now. Lastly, Amazon obviously reporting earnings here. So again, Amazon reporting earnings. And again, they had a nice beat. The stock's jumping 7% pre-market. Amazon is the only trillion dollar company out there that hasn't made a new all-time high in the last 52 weeks or so. All right, so again, you gotta wonder, are they gonna push this to get to those all-time highs? It's not that far away. I think it's about $18 away from where it's currently trading. That's not a huge move. It's about a 10% move higher from where it's trading currently currently pre-market to get to those levels. Now, again, going back to the jobs report, number one, we have the Fed Watch tool here. The Fed Watch tool did change pretty dramatically. All right, so before we get into the Fed Watch tool, I want to just tell you, a lot of people, and I heard this yesterday when I was on Market Mavericks, I heard it everywhere, everyone's saying, oh guys, you know, they come out with these strong jobs numbers and then they just revise them down by 20 or 30 percent the next month. Okay, that was valid for a few of the last of reports, but this report, last month's jobs data was revised up over 100,000 jobs. So again, you can't really say it's always happening. They revised it to the upside. Now, could you argue these are all fake? Well, yeah, I mean, there's always conspiracy theories out there. That's fine and dandy. But ultimately, my point is that they're not, not all. You can't say they're all being revised down. This last one from last month got revised up 100,000. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100. Now, this was the NASDAQ yesterday. And the first thing you have to say is very impressive. Yesterday was coming off this nasty down day the previous day. The markets did have a good bounce to the upside. Side. Interestingly enough, there's a gap that was created right here, right? And my guess is it needs to be filled. And after we saw meta earnings and the markets rallying higher, it certainly looks like that could be as early as today that we fill this gap. Having said that, as a technician, you take what the charts say in front of you. What do the charts say in front of us? On the daily QQQ chart, you still have a short term top in place. What do I mean by that? Well, in terms of a short-term top, we basically have a scenario where we still have this, which is your topping tail, right? So this is still a topping tail, which marks a top right at these trend lines until proven otherwise. Now, it could be proven otherwise within days. Then that's fine. It gets proven otherwise. That's all about just the, the market doing its thing. But again, as a technician, this is the high pivot that stands out. The only way it fails is if we close on the daily chart above that high right there. To give you a price point on the QQQ, that's approximately $430, $430. So we'll see where we are. We're not that far away, frankly. You know, again, we were trading up very nicely this morning, in fact, come back just a little bit. Now, again, that's something to pay attention to, these two trend lines. If we do get through this high, we still have this area up here, although that it's very close to that level. All right, so again, that's something to keep an eye on. The other thing to keep an eye on as well is just because you have a top in a market doesn't necessarily mean the markets are gonna collapse. And in fact, what I said to you guys as well, and so important, is that what we need to do is we need to take a couple trend lines here and stretch them out here. And this basically gives us a parallel line, right? So as of now here, so this line here, this one right here, right? is parallel with this one right here, and we have a pivot, pivot, and pivot. So what I'm saying to you guys is that, yeah, sure, this is a top, but really the markets can trade within this range for a certain amount of time. The thing that would get me thinking more downside is here is when this line breaks. We start trading down here, now you become in this kind of red alert zone in the NASDAQ 100, and we're still not there, right? So even though you have, I, I think there's this misconception that people say, oh, there's a top, you know, so that must mean we're about to collapse. It's not like that. Yes, do I think eventually we will see a collapse? Yes, but we have to break key levels, right? You just don't go from a massive bull market to an overnight collapse unless really there's some sort of World War III breakout or something major like that, a black swan event as we call it. All right, going to the S&P 500 real quick, guys. S&P 500 here, um, again, beautiful reversal day here. We still have this trend line. We don't have a topping tail on the S&P at this point. Like there's no topping tail. Yes, we have this longer term trend line, which seems 
really good, right? I mean, if we zoom out on the chart, we can see again, it comes from the COVID lows. But again, you don't have the same signal that you have on the NASDAQ at this point, aside from this trend line. We're still above the all-time highs right here. So again, that's still doing its thing. Um, and again, part of me still thinks that maybe the market needs to still touch 5,000 on the S&P, just because psychologically that will be a big barrier to kind of diminish any last bears out there and ultimately get the last bulls on board. And that might be an area where if we get a topping tail on a pierce or a break of 5,000, that's more significant to me. All right, so let's get into a few other things. So quickly on the jobs report. In fact, quickly, I do want to check back in on the intraday. So I just want to show this is your intraday pre-market data. And I just want to really show this is pretty remarkable, right? So here's where the markets closed yesterday right here, okay? So again, we closed right here yesterday. And this was the move up on Meta and Amazon earnings. This was your sideways chop into last night's close of after hours. Here's your pre-market and here's the jobs report. So again, we haven't done a full 180 yet, right? Or 360, I should say, right? You haven't gone all the way back here, right here, but we're not that far away at this point. And again, just interesting to see the market being pressured. Now, why is the market being pressured? Obviously, the jobs data, the jobs data being so strong, the reduction of possibility of interest rates. But really, it all comes down to this, right? I mean, look at the move on the US dollar here. Like, that is incredible. That type of move. This, by the way, this isn't the US dollar. I apologize. This is the 10 year. We'll look at the dollar. It looks equally as crazy. But look at the move on the 10 year to piercing. We went, we literally went from multiple days down on the 10 year. Everyone anticipating, oh, the Fed's going to cut. And even when Jerome, even when Jerome Powell on, on Wednesday said, hey, there's no cut in March, the yield still went down even more. In fact, that was one of its biggest down days that we've had recently. And then here we go, little rip your face off pop in the yields right back to the upside. Bitcoin pulling back just a little bit. Resistance is still in play here. So we still have our 43 to 44,000 resistance. Again, simple. I love keeping the chart simple. I know you guys love that as well. And by the way, great comments continuing. Really appreciate all the kind words and love. It's really, it makes me pumped for the next game plan. So I do appreciate that. But again, Basically, if we take out 44,000, we start moving above, we can retest our highs. If not, and we start getting pushed down, the 38,000 remains resistance. Same thing on Ethereum, right? Ethereum is in a channel. I've talked about this channel with you guys before. It's an absolutely amazing channel if we zoom out. The fact that it's kind of stayed within this zone. The one thing we have to remember is simply put, we have this dotted line, which is the midpoint of the channel, and that's where we are hitting right in here. All right, so 2200, if 2200 holds, this can trade back up to 27 plus. If it breaks, you're probably going down to about 17 to 1800 on, um, on Ethereum. All right, next up, gold, guys. We talked about gold dropping. Look at the drop on gold. It's not, again, you know, in the scheme of things, we're just inside of basically the last couple updates in gold. But the bigger point here is that we've had no breakout yet. There's been no breakout on gold here, and we continue to just be up just underneath this level. Um, and sure enough, we'll have to see where it goes. The only thing I would not want to see here, we have a general trend line here. Not the straightest line, I apologize for that. But I, I'd ideally like to see gold hold this line, you know, hold that line. If it doesn't, it might come back to like 1975, maybe even 1950. But again, this would be the ideal. If you're a gold bull, you'd want to see this, you know, basically 2015-ish level hold on that. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content.